they were not completely built yet. The, the offices really didn't even have, they were like phones on the floor with wires, you know. And um, there were just the beginnings of walls being set up to divide offices into spaces. Uh, and desks kind of strewn around. It, it looked like all the detritus from other offices that, that was unwanted had been like thrown into this office, this big space. Uh, and there were two banks of elevators, one that worked really well and one that took forever to come up. You never wanted, and you know, the, the one that worked well after a certain hour of the day was locked and didn't work. So you were consigned to the one down the hall that took forever to come and go. Uh, so it was, um, yeah, we, we kind of felt like the throwaway gang. Uh, but it was a situation where I was meeting the writers and everybody had a very distinct personality. I had never met anybody like them. Turned out Tom Schiller was from LA. We had a very similar upbringing. Turned out my sister had been his camp counselor. We went to the same school. I knew I recognized him, but he was older than me, but I knew I knew him. So that was kind of a six degrees. Um, I'd never met anybody like Michael O'Donohue before, never met anybody like Chevy. Um, Lauren's cousin, Neil, oh, what was his last name? He did magic. One of my first impressions of Chevy, um, we found out that Tom Schiller has lupus. And at the time, I mean, we thought it was like a fatal disease. And Chevy was going on about, you know, years from now when the show is very famous, of course you won't be there, Tom. You know, I mean, this was the kind of thing that Chevy would do as a joke. Uh, and Neil, uh, Lauren's um, cousin, was a really accomplished magician. He would do the kind of card tricks, you know, we were on the 17th floor where the card would end up outside the window. So that was pretty fun. Um, and Herb Sargent, who was from, I think that was the week that was, or something like that. And he was this kind of avuncular, quiet guy who would just kind of say things that were really funny, very slyly, very quietly, and really sweet. Um, and Garrett and Chevy were originally hired as writers. And I didn't meet Garrett for a long time. Uh, so then it was a matter of watching the other auditions and they were held at this place called NOLA, which I think is a rehearsal space in New York. And we watched Jane's audition and it was, I think, between her and Mimi Kennedy, who was so good. But it was clear that Jane was just, she was fantastic and, you know, something that she had written herself. But I think Mimi was also from an improv background. Um, but a lot of character actors audition, character actors that you see all the time on Law and & Order. And it was so, you know, brutal to see people and how nervous they were. I never, ever want to have to see something like that again, because I'm them, you know? And Margie Gross, um, who I think is a distant relative of uh, Gilda's, um, who eventually ended up to be a very successful comedy writer. But at the time, I think she was like 18 and so funny. It was a stand-up, you know. And I remember Lauren turning around and saying to someone that I could hear it, he said, Margie Gross should be encouraged, you know. Because he really could spot talent. 